Howdy folks, welcome back. Today's video is going to be a continuation on two videos ago where I started a tips and approach video on the cab corner, rear pillar, and outer rocker. Um, I'm videotaping this after the fact as I typically do. So you're seeing kind of the final product for the front side of the cab corner uh, and the pillar. Before I get right into the video, I just wanted to thank everybody as always for watching and subscribing and liking the videos. Um, really do appreciate that. If you haven't done so and you've been back a few times with me, uh, please subscribe. Once again, would really appreciate it if you're watching to do that. And without further ado, I reckon we'll get right into it. Alrighty folks, welcome back. Uh, two videos ago, I posted a rocker and cab corner tips and approach video. Um, so this is the second video in that series, if you want to call it that. I would recommend watching both the current video and the previous video that I mentioned before watching my other rocker and cab corner videos because um, I think this one might give you a better uh, approach. To and if you want to see more of the work actually being done, I would definitely recommend watching those videos because you should should see it done a couple times. But anyway, since we last did the, the previous video, um, I trimmed the rocker or, or the cab corner replacement down and screwed it into place and clamped it down at the bottom. And if you've already watched those videos or watched other videos where I mentioned it, I have mentioned that this curve on the rocker does not match the curve on the cab corner. And I'm very particular about that. I want them to match, and the way I do it, they will match, because uh, I, I don't like the way it looks when they don't match. Um, and the factory sheet metal was fairly close, uh, much closer than I found the reproduction cab corner and rocker to be. So. Just a side note, <clears throat> but I did mention, I believe in the previous video, that typically I cut the end off of the rocker, which you can actually see taped up here. And I had my cab corner replacement panel screwed into place roughly where I wanted it. Uh, I did not move the pillar over. I am going to make the cab corner gap correctly to the door. I'm not going to move the pillar over. Um, <clears throat> however, it did move slightly, just not even a sixteenth of an inch. It did come back slightly because when I put the outer rocker in there, it pushed it out. Just a small bit. Um, So I put my rocker in there, got it, got the gap where I wanted it. I made two shims like this to stick underneath the door and get the rocker where I wanted it. So I got the gap uh, right where I wanted it. And I put a self tapper in that end and then one right here on the inside next to my finger. You can't quite see it. And one up at the top of the panel, like right up in here. This face of this outer rocker did not match up. This curve did not match up with the cab corner. So what I did was I actually split the rocker right here about uh, eight inches. <clears throat> and then took a screwdriver and pried it down to get the curve of the outer rocker to match to the curve of the cab corner. All this is while the cab corner has a screw in it right here 
and a clamp down here. So it's not permanently in place. Um, and in just a second, I'll go ahead and put the cab corner on, but I want you to see what I've got going on here. So while I was doing all that, the cab corner was still here, which meant this piece was not here. This, this long piece was not there. So just try and imagine this. Hopefully you can see. Yeah, you can. There's a small piece right here, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. So whenever I had this where I wanted it, I ended up pushing this section back in a little bit because when I was prying against it, it actually pushed that in and pushed this, pushed this part in and pushed the bottom half out. So I got the bottom half where I wanted it, but there was a large gap right here. And I did not want to have to fill that large gap. And I also didn't want this section to be sticking back in real far. Um, so whenever I had the bottom curve lined up to the cab corner, uh, while I was holding it with one hand with the screwdriver, I took a little piece of scrap and I tacked it across from this back section to the forward section. Let's see if I can get up close. I had my screwdriver down in that crack and I was prying it back open. And that's what I'm talking about. This got pushed back and this got pushed out. Uh, so whenever I had that, this outside curve matched up with the cab corner, I took this piece of scrap and welded across there so it would stay where it was at. Okay. So in the meantime, I took my cab corner, I marked my cab corner along this bottom edge and cut it off, cut off the excess. And then I came back and I, and I saw this large gap in here. So what I did is I took this piece and welded it to the, the floor pan and then came onto this side and actually welded it right there. So that this piece would hold my curve, my rocker, where I wanted it. Then I cut this piece loose and bent this back out. And that's where I'm at now. So now I've got the curve still and I've got the upper part of this rocker back out uh, so it's not really recessed. Hopefully that's clear. I know that was a lot of blabbing. But essentially the takeaway from all this, what I'm telling you, is that I'm trying to get the rocker to match up as well as I can with everything else, including the cab corner, before the cab corner and the pillar get put in. Because if you wait and you don't try to do this in advance, you're at the mercy of wherever your cab corner and your pillar ended up. Because the height does matter with your cab corner because you, you use that to also help you match up the curve. And if you're not going up to the body line, it's easy to be up or down. Um, so this is just an additional effort to create less work when it comes to the outer rocker finally going in and lining up with everything. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put clamp my cab corner on and we'll come back and, and I'll show you where we're at. And also, if you look at the edge of this cab corner, you are going to need to trim this, the bottom edge, because it flares out. Um, so just a note, you will need to trim this off the bottom edge a little bit to help this all line up. So what's going on now is I, I can't get my cab corner on and over 
to match the body gap I want because this piece is in the way um, even though it's just a little bit it is pushing the bottom of my cab corner out too far so what I'm gonna do now is clean this up the splice that I was talking about the splice right here I'm gonna clean this up put some tack welds on it um, I'll probably take this off and just tack weld it real good in here that doesn't appear to it doesn't look like it'll it'll move any and uh, then I'll take this piece off and it looks like I might have to trim the bottom of the rocker back just a smidge more um, to get the cab corner all the way over but we'll see okay so at this point I've trimmed my cab corner to fit up in a place where I want it where this these two edges are within probably about a sixteenth of an inch um, which is great for filler um, <clears throat> And this all meets it's all within a sixteenth of an inch right here um, so filler will even this all out really good so that is looking down the gap the corner of the door uh, pull out just a little bit but that is how we're looking um, it would have been better if I left It looks like a big gap and it is kind of a big gap But it's also because that isn't pushed over but what I wish I had done is left this part of the cab corner to overlap um, Because now I'll probably have to put in a split right here and tweak it up uh, But I can't do that until I get this where I want it because um, it might change it so We've got the outer rocker pretty much good. I need to, as mentioned, bend this section out and mark what I need to trim off that lip. But that's pretty close up there. Um, cab corner curve is if you can even see it is pretty darn accurate um, that's another reason why I wish I had left the back edge of that overlap for now because in order to make this curve match sometimes it tweaks the back of the cab corner patch panel at this point I'm gonna make sure I've got the cab corner marked up really well I'm going to try and place a self-tapping screw right through there um, onto the back side of this little drop there's the original pillar drops down a little bit lower than this line so I'm gonna try and get a self tapper right there uh, to locate this whenever I go to pull it on and off and one down at the bottom now I will when I after I get the cab corner, at, at some point, I'm not exactly sure when, but I will trim this edge of the outer rocker back this way uh, to line up with the door gap, as I have done on all the other videos. And then this corner will be relatively set. I did have to take the lip of the cab corner patch panel and bend it out a little bit towards the end towards the front of the cab to line up with the rest of the way this looks um, so yeah from here we're just going to try and make sure our cab corner doesn't move at all uh, and that we can locate it easily uh, via the two self tappers at the top and the bottom and I'll go ahead and make a B pillar to fit inside that and locate it fit all this up again tack 
the pillar into place with the rocker and then go ahead and weld up the the pillar to the excuse me the pillar to the cab corner and then once I get it all fitted up with the outer rocker in place then I'll pull it all off weld the pillar to the cab corner like I've done in all the other renditions and then go ahead and permanently prepare to permanently weld the cab corner into place now as mentioned I'm, I might have to make a splice back here to bend the back up a little bit to line up, but that's perfectly okay. Uh, we'll deal with that when we get there. Alrighty, so what you're looking at now is a fast forward from the last video, obviously, or the last section of this video. But I've got this cab corner um, welded in place, and I've had some questions on how I weld the panels in, so. I put a tack about every inch and the way I did this is I held it in place with these clamps you've seen me show them um, one side goes on one side of the panel and then this little square piece fits up in this and you can tighten it down and it pinches the two panels together um, so I use these primarily just because they hold them well and the way it works out is I put a tack on either side of each of these and I I mean I've got a couple little bends of these so at any rate you put a tack about every inch and you can go ahead and remove those little holders you wait till you can touch it because if, if you can't hold your finger there, it's still too hot. Like I just tack welded every inch on the back side and it's still pretty hot. Um, so you're gonna need to wait a couple minutes between each set. So what I did is I repeated the process until I had this first section done till about there because I actually had to go back and splice this because it was too low in the back if you watch the other videos you saw that this was sitting too low back here and I didn't want to just if I forced it up I would create a lot of tension in the metal here so I just cut it and re-welded it so at any rate once you get the front side completely tacked over where you can't see any light through um, one of the questions I've had is what do you do with the back side? Well, I do the same thing on the back side as I do on the front side. And if you do the back, if you wait, so this doesn't look very clean. And the reason it doesn't look very clean is because you're filling a gap. And depending on the angle of where your nozzle is, um, your, your filler metal is coming out and there's a gap right there. So it's striking either the top, top piece or the bottom piece or your previous tack in a different spot each time. Uh, no matter how, how you hold it, Depending on where this comes out and that arc strikes is where that that little spot weld starts. So that why, that's why there's a little differentiation between each spot weld is because this is just striking its arc or creating its circuit between this and the ground clamp in different places. So I'll show you the inside in a minute. But that is why I do the whole front side before I ever touch the back side uh, because I don't do anything to the back side other than 
Um, if they don't come out super clean, I'll run a flap disc over it just once or twice just to ground the tips down. And then I just sandblast the whole weld seam if it's been a little bit and seal it. So at any rate, after you get this front section filled in to where you can't see light through, you come inside and you do the same thing. But a lot of times, if you wait and do all the inside first and then grind this down, you won't have as many holes to fill back in. I left a splice here. I didn't fill that in. I'm actually gonna need to cut that, that tack weld and move this spot out a little bit to match that perfectly. But all this is gonna be covered up by the outer rocker. I've got it bolted in. I, I've already tested it to make sure the outer rocker is going to fit good. Crossing our fingers, it still looks like the outer rocker is going to not take nearly as much work as the other side, uh, which is good because this is taking, <laughs> it always takes longer than you think it is, but it's going to. But this has well surpassed this at this point. So. Um, we're just trying to keep moving with it but I wanted to go ahead and and just show you this for now and I'll, I'll go ahead and finish this up and grind it off so you can see what it looks like alrighty so got all this cleaned up like I said I got the whole inside tack I did not have to go back and fill in one spot on this whole section. There's there's one uh, pinhole I'm gonna, it's not even a complete pinhole, it's just a little depression. Uh, so I, out of all this section, there's only one spot I need to go back and tack weld. But the way that I grind off the seam is I take the edge of this small grinder and the just the very just the very edge of this wheel I let touch the spot well and you got to be real careful try and get the thicker uh, discs they they sell multiple different thicknesses this is just a cheap Harbor Freight pack um, 1 16th inch thick uh, so you got to don't get the don't get any thinner than a 16th inch because it will tend to break on you but uh, If you take it and you just work it down across your your weld seam and get it real close What I like to do is spray if, if there isn't paint up against both sides of the weld just spray some cheap black paint on there and uh, that way you can tell if you go off of your weld easy, but you just walk this, this down your weld seam until it starts to get nearly flat. Don't go, don't go too far, just get it real close and then I come in with the two inch disc and just carefully um, feather it in to the bottom and the top and it, it's pretty close it'll take minimal f filler but that that's that's as good as it's gonna get for a butt weld with a MIG gun so and uh, show you the inside real quick before I come back in here I'll probably just take the um, the sandblaster and just sandblast this whole lip or this whole seam and then seal all this in here one more time. I'll do that all the way across. I'll wait till I replace this back panel. Might be better if I just turn the light off. Let's see. I'll wait to replace the back lower panel. You can see I haven't done that side yet. You can see the light coming through it. Um, that's how we'll do that. 
you've seen my other videos, that's exactly how I did the rest of the truck. It turns out pretty good. And after um, I get all this in sealer, and I'm ready to do some seam sealer, I'll come back and seam seal all those spot welds real good. Uh, that joint, the front joint, everything. So you can see I, I just left it off right there and right there. I haven't even ground that from about here over yet. Um, catching up with you. Went ahead and finished our kick panel section. I had to go back and fill in some, some pinholes. But that's looking good. Happy with that. That'll all get seam sealed. And I guess what I'm going to go ahead and do is, is finish welding. I'll split that back out, get this where I want it, and finish this seam off. Alrighty, folks, so I've got the front side of the cab corner right where I want it. I have the rest of the pillar welded up real nice, uh, seamed up good. So we're going to conclude this video here, and when we come back to the next part, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and show you how much it took for me to get the rocker finalized to fit up to this. Um, took some preliminary steps to try and ensure we don't have to do too much work to the outer rocker. And this, this cab corner and pillar turned out real nice, um, in the meantime, I may just go ahead and coat it with some cheap paint. That way I don't have bare metal out here because it's rained so much and it's supposed to rain a lot. Um, at least over the weld joints, I'll probably go ahead and spray some cheap black paint on it and then just clean it off before I go to seal it. Um, and when I go to seal all this up, I'll seal all of this and I'll seal the front A pillar because I haven't done that yet. So I think that pretty much concludes this episode. I hope that uh, watching me do this work has helped you. Uh, appreciate everybody who's liking and commenting on the videos. I uh, had quite a few questions via email. Um, I put the, my email down in all the video descriptions. So if you want to send me questions, feel free. Uh, try and include pictures though because pictures are worth a thousand words as they say and um it's also the same email for my paypal if you feel inclined to donate to that really appreciate the folks who've done that so at any rate if you haven't already done so please hit the subscribe button and we will see y'all next time